Well, hello, everyone. Hey, hey, how y'all doing? Man, we got a we got a a pile of people up in here. Fifty two watching right now. Uh, Good starting out. I know, right? And just paper. Sting the like button while you're in here. Real easy. It's free. The um man, tell you what, I've been pretty busy for that. I haven't been working. I've been working around the house. <laughs> Getting everything uh that's what that's our name. Sometimes I gotta go to work to get a break. Tell you what, I've worked uh quite a bit in the yard the last couple of days and draining syrup. I've probably drained oh I'm gonna say 30 buckets. So 30 times five, 150 gallons. Actually, yeah, it should be more than that, actually. Uh, probably closer to 200 gallons for some um, of uh, syrup and still have some left to drain. Only problem is I'm out of buckets, out of lids. So, well, not out of buckets. I am out of lids, however. So <laughs> I could, uh, I need to get some. What size buckets do you use? In? Just five gallon buckets. The five gallon. Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, and it comes out so slow. I mean, literally, uh, at this point, it's start a bucket, go do some yard work, come back about 25, 30 minutes later and put a lid on it, you know? And, uh, is that with the, uh, lid cracked on top of the, uh, main one? Yep. That's with it all the way off, actually. I didn't figure it drained that slow. Well, it's not, it wouldn't, it's a, it's my setup, right? It's because it's only a one inch pipe that comes off of it. So it gets full and it just comes out slow. If I had, you know, a, a larger ho uh, hose or pipe coming off of it, it would move faster. But at this point, uh, we're just, but uh, well, thank you, Mark. Um, just uh, near the end now, right? So I just need to get it off the truck so I can use my truck again. Yeah, I should go get you a forklift. You yeah, have one sitting in the backyard. Just go buy a forklift and bring it down. No problems. No problem at all. But uh, yeah, I mean, bees look good. I think as uh, I think I'm at 43, 43 or 44. I counted them this morning. I think it's 43, and I think I said 44 on the video. But um, just letting them do their thing, man, and get get established. I did a uh, short video the other day it was probably a minute and a half long and those nukes that i got the sunday i got the syrup so week and a half ago now oh uh, thanks phil appreciate you buddy um i put the nuke right in the center of the box with th three frames on one side and two frames on the other right and uh undrawn foundation and after a week, those bees did not move out at all to work any of those frames. But the ones that I put the five frames in there and then two frames of drawn comb on one side and three frames of drawn comb on the other side started working the whole box to clean it up and give a room to lay. So that experiment lasted a week. Thanks, James. And I went ahead and, uh, and popped the... Uh, what you call it there, the uh, the foundations out and put put the frames in there just to give those nukes some momentum to you know get built out and then once they get built out I'll I'll throw the foundation on top for the honey and uh, you know that's that's getting close in the next week or so I'm gonna have to drop that on there. You um, know the foundations you put in that they wouldn't messing with those are you got uh, fresh wax on them. Mm -hmm. hmm. I figured this time of the year, a little nectar coming in and you uh, putting the sugar water out that they'd be uh, they didn't that. Move. They didn't want to move off of that. Um, they did not want to move off of that at all. So it was uh, it was really interesting. And I, I did that specifically because uh, 
you know, when Brad comes on, he always says that the bees do not see foundation as space, right? Um, and so I said, well, let's let's try it and see what happens. And it absolutely, they stayed right on those uh, drawn combs and didn't move out. And when, uh, you know, and if you think about it, now I understand a lot of times we don't have that extra uh, comb to put in there, right, for them to, to work with. So um, sometimes we just have to put foundation and let them take their time and, and work that out, right? Um, so what we did is, um, you know, in the past, what I would have done is probably dropped a couple frames in there of foundation, but I've got comb. I've got deep comb to use. So um, went ahead and used that. And if I need fresh comb, you know, James or Brad was saying, well, then give them that honey super as fresh comb. So when they move up there now, those if you're using deeps now next year, those deep honey frames now can be brood comb. Right. And you just keep moving them down like that. If it helps them build up faster, that's, you know, that's what I'm going to do. I, there's no need for me to have that drawn comb just sitting off to the side and make them have to build it because they're going to have to use resources or I'm going to have to feed them to do that. Right. So I uh, try and not to put feed out. I put a little bit out for them yesterday just because I have those nukes that really don't have much of anything and really not many bees hit it at all. So. I was about to say, I figured they'd be hitting it, but at the same time, if you have nectar starting to come in, they're not mm -hmm. probably going to mess with it as much, but you take a chance also with them putting nectar in the hives that yeah. they could take some of that sugar water and put in there too, and then you're going to end up with some funny honey. Yeah, so that's why most of my boxes are in, except for the really strong ones. Um, most of the the strong ones that I have um, haven't gotten any feed, right? I haven't put any feed out for <laughs> at all. They've already got stores and everything they're working on. It was just the, the ones that needed the feed were the ones that were kind of getting it. I mean, and it's, it's really um, to give you an idea, I was pouring that syrup all day today. And at the end of the day, there was like five bees near me on where I'd spilt it on my, tailgate and just a handful of them in in the feeder so it's not crazy um and if they have to draw wax or store that in their their brood chamber i'm okay with that um but as soon as that's gone and the boxes go on there won't be any more right it's just to to get them through at the moment and yeah, it's for all the supers that I put on, I believe it was two weekends ago, already had drawn out comb in it. Oh, and really? Being the nectar is just starting to come in, so I don't think that we're going to draw out a whole lot right now just on foundation. So I figured I'd let them take that nectar and just fill up the frames that are there now. Now you put that right I, above them? This time I had three supers on one of them, and I put it on the top because I still didn't want to lift a whole lot yet with my leg. Mm -hmm. but generally I would under super, I would remove the other ones and put the new super on bottom. Now, once you. our flow starts hitting pretty good, then I'll put some uh, fresh frames on there that don't have no drawn comb out. Just fresh I, do wax. Have, I do have a Hivezilla update. Those splits that I made, the like one frame, two frame little splits that I made off of the queen cells. Mm -hmm. um, one of them was bringing in pollen today. So that's a good chance. She's got a, they got a mated queen in there. Um, more might be doing that. However, I didn't hang around to find out, right? <laughs> I just walked through. Oh, yeah, they're bringing pollen in and kept going. So, um, so they're doing all right. Everybody's doing good right now in the in the yard. Had one colony that had a little. It was one of the nukes had a little uh, deformed wing virus, and uh, I just put a happy tablet on them and left them there's nothing i can do about it right so we're just gonna let it go so far any of the ones that i've looked at which i hadn't dove deep into the hives but just looking at them coming in and out cracking the lid and glancing in i hadn't seen anything yet no hive beetles and 
The mm-hmm. couple of supers that I did pick up had some drone comb in between them. So when they cracked up, I didn't see no mites in the cells or anything like that. So I'm hoping everything's going to do pretty good for me. I would like to know of the people that are watching right now, there's 78. Um, a lot of you bought Apitalis and tried them. Are you noticing hive beetles in your Apitala colonies? I personally am not. Um, and a lot of people have said that um, that they had the same experience. And I'm just curious with the viewers that if they are or aren't. Um, I mean, one of them I did earlier, uh, but I put tablet on it and then they seemed to leave. Except for last time I was in there, I think I saw one hive beetle in all my inspections. So um, it's got a lot of the stuff in it that uh, even like Tim and Hannah are talking about with the drizzle with the uh, eucalyptus oil and stuff like that is in it. So it could be very effective on them, but really won't know till, uh, um, till the summer, right? Till like June, July, August, when those beetles get bad, then we'll yeah, know. Well, usually right after you pull the honey off here, at least that's usually the worst time. There is peppermint in the tablet too, that I'm, uh, as far as I know, uh, I talked to Mehmet a little bit today and he was saying he did mention the eucalyptus and, uh, and, and uh, before he has mentioned peppermint. So that's, that's pretty good. If it, if it's got them and it could just be a, a benefit, man, if it, if that works for high beetles too, and I've already got it on there, it's a win for me. So and they're looking at text. Ed, son of one, just sent me a picture and his privet's starting to pop open there too. My privet's got the little bulbs on it, right? Like it's just getting ready to. As yep. from Ed here. Mine looks like the the one hanging down there, the green bulbs. Yep. Sure enough, it's getting ready to happen for us too. So I'd say about 90, 95% of ours has already opened up now. So they get a lot of flowers. Now, the thing I'm worried about, we got some bad storms coming here after midnight tonight and basically half to three quarters of tomorrow. Right. And before we even left work today, they sent out a group text and said they just canceled work for tomorrow, don't even show up. They're talking 40, 50 mile an hour winds, hail, rain. So I'm kind of worried that it might tear that privet up a little bit. And we didn't have a privet flow really last year. And well, I don't think it, we had one much the year before. Well, we had last week, we had a rain that was really strong outside and it, uh, it didn't mess with mine at all, but I don't have the flowers on it. Right. The flowers are, I mean, the flowers, it'll look like it's snowing in my yard because as the bees work it, the petals fall off of it. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's, uh, they're pretty fragile. Yeah, I just don't want to take a chance. Well, it ain't really much I can do about it, but I just don't want it getting hit so hard that it knocks everything off so that the bees can't get no nectar out of it and then right. have another bad year of privet. Because I got a couple people that's wanting that light-colored honey this year. Well, I got put on a new medication from the VA. It's injectable for uh, cholesterol. It's kind of the Hail Mary pass to get my cholesterol down. And we'll see if that works. Amy enjoyed stabbing me in the arm with this with the <laughs> injectable <laughs> pin. But she gives me the shit. She gives me the injection, right? You do it once every two weeks. And then she's like, I like, did you read any side effects on this thing? And she says, Oh, I read all the directions, but I didn't find out about the side effects. And then she goes and reads them and comes back. Oh, yeah, you could have cramping and feeling like you got the flu for a few days and I'm like, man, that's what I need. Feeling like poop again. It, it looks good. I call it polishing a turd. Hey, I'm trying to catch up on the comments there. I missed a few. Yeah, I, saw, I saw DC's video. He's been doing some shop work out there. Yeah, he had a bunch of uh, boxes to paint the other day. Got them looking good. James said he filled up 250 honey straws last night. Mm. 
I am I am almost out of honey. I've got one pint and maybe 10 pounds, you know, so it's like very little honey left in this honey shed right now. So uh, I might have two or three pounds in the uh, bottling tank there behind me. And it's uh, it's a little sh I'm a little short for this year. Oh man, I I'm not sure the name of the place where they um where who sells the wax. Um I know it's got microcrystal in. I know Cayman did a video on it one time. Uh when he was doing a wax dipping video. My swarm decided to leave me. Did you, you didn't lock them in for two days? Well, I don't know if two days is long enough because I've done it for two days in it. Um, CosterCunin.com. I know Thorne sells the wax dipper, but I don't know if they sell the wax as well. They might. Paraffin and microcrystalline. All right. Um, wax dipper would be nice but man we the amount of wax that's got to go in it and it's a lot to fill it up to start with yeah a lot i think i i want to say james mcnally's costs like five or six thousand dollars to to fill up um uh, and i could be wrong but i'm pretty sure that's what he said because of the size of it and that he can do pallets and all in there and keep that going. Oh, hi, Icy Mountain. Good to see you. I got too many wires. Yeah, I got I got to do something in here. I've been focused on outside and haven't even touched anything on the inside. Starts off with four hundred pounds. Ugh. Hmm. What's your cost on four hundred pounds? Did you figure that out yet? Yeah, the rest that's true and and he's even redipping them every year he's pulling them off and he it made a good point in his video because you're basically sterilizing those boxes after you like when you redip them so he pressure washed them off and on the inside and uh, then redips them and anything that's in there the the heat will kill so so that's pretty good, you know, if you can do that. But when you start talking hundreds and hundreds of boxes, the time involved, if you're doing 15 minutes like he was, 15 minutes the first time, three minutes the second time. Uh, so that's 18 minutes plus time to load it. So you're every bit of 20 minutes at least. Yeah, it sounds like a good job when you're already doing some yard work. Drop one in, make a round or two with your lawnmower, come back and pop them out. It'd be my luck that they would overflow and burn the whole honey house down. Catch it all on fire. Not that there's much you could do if you if it overflowed and you were standing right there, even you know, just flame up probably. Last twenty five years, yeah, that's uh. <laughs> Russell said, "At my age, I don't need my boxes." The last twenty five years, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. So see, we got Mr. Larry, Miss Jan, and uh missed to see if Miss Leona was in there. Yep, oh, she's in there too. Sure, she's back there. Yep. I talked to uh, Mr. Larry earlier. Are you talked to him today? Yep. I haven't talked to him in a while. We do talking about look, camera, microphone stuff. It's uh yeah, I need to get with you too if I buy well, I can't buy one right now in my current situation, but if it changes, I want to get one. Uh, and you saying the road mic will sync right up with a um, GoPro or only yes, certain sir. GoPros? Uh, I know like the 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12, they will. As long as it has the USB-C port on it, and then I have the little road uh, audio adapter. Well, mine's got the uh, USB-C. It's on... Yeah, it'll plug in. Now, mine, I got it set to where it comes through this cable, 
into this box into here because this is also a battery. So I can run right. it into this box and keep the camera charged while the audio is working. So what's the thing on top for? What you think? This? Yeah. That's what I put. I put the receiver in here. Uh, let me reach right here. Take my receiver, slide it in that bracket. I missed the bracket. And then I plug the cable in. So that holds my receiver right there. Oh, okay. And then it picks up the microphone, which then yep. transmits to the audio and to the GoPro. Yeah. While it's charging off the stick. That's a lot of stuff. Y'all were on me about getting a tripod. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if y'all notice under Bob's name tonight, he's still Tripod Bob. <laughs> it, it might might be a minute before we get that one. I see. Yeah, comments are flying by tonight. Yeah, there's. Yeah, that's Brian says his privet's close to opening too, in Birmingham. Uh, let me see here. Trying to think uh, where I put all that at. Which hard drive? What you got there? Waiting on uh, another network drive to load. Hey, Carl. Good to see you. I talked to Matt for a minute today. And I saw Jack and Danae's video. I'm going to have to check that out. I didn't know they posted one. It was, oh, you're not in the Facebook group. That's why. Oh, nah, I, I don't do all that. My phone Mike, goes off enough as it is. Mike said, Mike Tengis said they still have, uh, snow up there i think let's see i don't know what we were at today right now it was only mid 60s here today we're at 73 right now i think it was about 82 83 today for the high but it was pretty cloudy we're supposed to get that tomorrow now that's my privet right now so it's starting yeah you got some open yeah a bunch of it's open it's still got a few of them that's starting to open they're getting the little white tips on them but that was, I think, two or three days ago. So what is what blooms that tells you, okay, it's time. The flow is on right now. That privet? Privet for our early flow. I mean, we'll get some clover and everything, but mainly I like that privet. It's a real light sweet honey, which mm -hmm. is what Renee really likes. I don't mind it, but I prefer the dark honey, the more bold flavor. But I like whenever the tallow comes on, too. Let's see. The uh, we've got the privet. I mean, we've got a little bit of something coming in right now, but not a uh, hey, Sarah, did you get your package? I hope you did. Um, should be there by now. I know Russell said he got his package from me today. Uh, Danae, did y'all's come in? Yep, S Sarah's delivered. Travis Tyler, his is still in transit, it says. All right, today I'll be looking for that email. I had someone in Australia contact me about getting Appy tablets, and they only wanted one sleeve. And I went to look at the shipping. The shipping to Australia was the as much shipping cost as it was a sleeve of tablets. So it was like would have been double the price, right? And then on top of that, it would have taken one to four weeks, it said. So um yeah, that so he's like, yeah, not. I said, well, if you know of any beekeeping supply stores, let me know. Maybe they'll pick it up and then you can just go get it, you know, mm -hmm. something like that. 
shipping across basically uh country lines is gonna get high i shipped one book to canada and i mean i don't remember what the book calls 20 25 bucks whatever i think it was like 53 dollars just in shipping yeah i shipped three books and it was uh 63 dollars it's like seven pounds 63 dollars i can't even keep up with comments tonight they are scrolling by tonight which is good black privet and tulip popper poplars when it's on i just seen one comment but i can't find it now Anyway, sure. somebody said something about dandelion up there. Anyway, most of ours has already went to seed. We still got a couple that's popping up, but majority of them seed. Uh, let me find my other window here. I'll have to check that out. So Westcliff Honey says, anyone see Dr. Tom Seeley has a new book out. Better be did an interview on YouTube with him. And it looks like it's going to have some great info for us beekeepers. Have to check that one out. Have to check it out. The, um, you know, I saw a post. I think it was a post. And it was, uh, came in was in a photo and he was reading the American Bee Journal and he was talking about uh, the Randy Oliver article about, well, I know in this month, in April, the Randy Oliver article was about uh, extended release thymol, and uh, which is funny um, that now it's a thing, right? Uh, because Randy Oliver did something on it. And we've been talking about extended release thymol and happy tablet for, you know, since last September. And uh, everybody was poo poo and nay nay in it. And now all of a sudden, Randy Oliver puts an article out and it's the best thing since sliced bread. And it's uh, it's funny how that flips flips everything. Just takes one person. They were just equalizing and boosting the week but you know what we should drop a link because it's 40 minutes after so we've been going for a good 30 minutes by ourselves here i'm about to drop a link here in the comments if everybody wants to check it out that's for j and d's honeybees that's going to be jack and danae they got a video up on there so make sure y'all go sub to them let me i'll drop the link here um I had it just a second ago, but I just copied other stuff. You see what Philip said? It's funny how fast people shut up. Yeah, even the ones that are saying bad stuff about it, you know, when it's uh, on somebody's live stream. And then Randy Oliver comes with an article, and it's very interesting stuff now. So, crazy. That's it. Exactly, DC. But it's, uh, you know, if <laughs> the the thing is that once uh, I think everybody that has tried it has seen good results with the Appy tablet and uh, we've been sharing it. And uh, you had been watching it going on for three years now. I know it's it's crazy how that works is that someone will say something. Oh, well, you know, peppermint deters small hive beetles oh no that's there's no science involved in that and and then you put peppermint in and your hive beetles go away right and it's like well okay well that that's a thing you know <laughs> i don't need a scientific article it's it's showing me that it's working so let me see carl said he did five double screen board splits and have all all five have queen cells that's awesome It is, I think. I think so too, DC. That makes a big difference, and you know, um, with with the Appy tablet, you know, you tell them, hey, well, this company's been around for sixty years. They don't stay in business for uh, for sixty years without selling a good product, right? Yep. 
<laughs> I mean, it is what it is, right? Nobody stays in business. I was about to say they, they might make some sales for a year or so and do decent. And then if it finds out it ain't no good, then they go out. But after 60 years of sales, it, it should be something pretty decent. You would think so. And they probably uh, <laughs> have an idea of what they're doing, right? You know, that's the first time I got to see a picture of uh, Danae and Jack. I got to hear Jack drop a cuss word on there. <laughs> His uh -oh. video. <laughs> I'm going to have to go check that one out. <laughs> I still can't say the M word. Hey, that's good. I didn't even look yet. That must have been Tim, huh? I saw that video as well inside the Hive TV talking about uh, the same thing uh, last week. I'll, I'll have to email you and get where you're shopping at. It was an accident. It's a happy accident. Stress reliever. Yeah, I know the M word. Well, the main thing is for me is just keep the M words out of everything, out of my mouth, out of my hives, out off my bees. Everything is, is try to try to combat them. Hey, Jim, Jim, good to see you. Um, I was told when I started that it was supposed to last three to four weeks. However, um. They last quite a bit longer in my experience. Uh, it just depends on the size of your colony and how many bees are in there and how hungry they are. Um, if you got any nectar or pollen coming in, how hard they hitting it. Yep. And uh, all those things could, could influence it. But for me, the longer it's in there, the better. Uh, if it stays in there, the I think the ones I put in in September are finally gone. Like I put one in September, that one is gone. But I put another one right after that, and I believe it's gone now as well. So, um, so I'm just keeping it. <laughs> we usually put music over our videos because we have foul mouths. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I do it all the time. My brain ain't working too good today. Well, you know, uh, DC, I think that's going to change, a, at least with the YouTube community, because, um, you know, Bob Benny says he's trying to get away from synthetics. So, you know, uh, Bob speaks it, then came and will second it, and then it's a pass motion, and it's off and running. So, um, I believe that'll that'll catch on. It's starting to catch on. I mean, for me, I just want to put the least amount of chemical I can put in there or anything, really, the least amount I can put in to keep my bees alive. And, uh, and that's what, you know, that's what I want to do. But do we know what that least amount is, right? We don't. <laughs> It, it could change year to year. I was about to say year to year, and it depends how bad the mites are. I mean, you're going to have a good year. You might have a hive that just has more than any of your other ones, and you may right. have to treat that individual hive harder. Yep. And uh, and that's that's kind of uh, – I've, I've got a few of the uh, Apivar strips from last spring still up. Uh, available to me. I've got them zipped in a Ziploc bag. I've got the OA vaporizer, which I haven't used. I haven't used the OA since last spring either. Uh, which, which vaporizer are you using? I got the ProVap. ProVap, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got the ProVap. And uh, I haven't looked at the Veroxasan yet. I've heard about it. A matter of fact, you sent me a text on it. But I haven't looked at it yet. And it's supposed to, I think he said 98.6 uh, efficacy on that. Stuff has a way of backfiring. Yeah, it does. I mean, it's um, it, it's funny on 
sometimes you'll see people on uh, YouTube, especially, uh, they'll they'll talk down at something without trying it, and then all of a sudden, it's the most interesting thing out, right? Because they finally get it, um, for whatever reason that is, and I'm okay with that. Uh, but it, it's funny how that opinion flip-flops right as well say i mean whether you think it's going to work or not give it a try and find out for yourself i mean you don't have to have somebody mm -hmm. with a phd or anything tell you that it's going to work or not work well some people require it well, yeah. Apparent. i mean they say i i just say try it out i mean if it's good keep doing it, it don't matter what anybody else says i mean you do what you feel you need to do yeah, that's it. I mean, when I put out a video and I'm showing something, I'm just showing you what I'm doing. Could be wrong, could be right. You know, kind of like Mike Berry. This is what I do. Yep. Not a how to do. But, um, you know, but I have uh, watched Mike Berry's videos and say, you know what? I know this isn't a how to video, but I like how he did that, right? And that's, and then do it or try to do it. And most of us try to do it and then put our own little spin on it because it never seems to end up exactly uh, like it was, right? Well, that's what I was going to say. I mean, you, you can watch three, four, ten different YouTube people and take a little bit from each one of mm -hmm. them and come up with your own way of doing something. But yeah. to me, number one, location, location, location. Yep. Somebody up in Canada can't do the same thing somebody down here in Louisiana with me is doing at the same time of the year. You have to oh, factor in what that se what that season is. Say we're we're in spring here. They still got twenty five foot of snow or whatever up there. See what Randy said there, right? I do whatever it takes to keep my bees alive. Exactly, exactly. Well, hey guys, the link is right up here by Robbie, right here up in the corner, and uh, you know, come on and join us. I know Charlie is if I'm. He went down to pick up uh, um, packages from Georgia, so he's probably on the road. I know Brad's got a meeting tonight. Um, who knows what Todd's doing? Tuesday, is he cooking tacos tonight? He's probably prepping food at least. At, at the very minimum, he's he's prepping food. Or he, he is in uh, – he, he is up in uh, – California, so he might be stuck in traffic or something. Let me see. That's it. Every frame's different. Exactly right. And you just got to be able to, uh, you know, look at something and, and realize it's something different, right? Oh, well, that's new. Uh, keep that open mind when you're beekeeping. And your bees will tell you a lot what they need if you if you're looking at them if you're listening right and and paying attention to what you're seeing like I went through all of those uh, eighteen nukes that I have left that you know because I sold two of them and there was only one out of the uh, eighteen that I inspected that had something out of you know kind of crazy going on in there and uh, but other than that they all look looked really good. Uh, made one queen faint trying to mark her. She just kind of, which made it easy just to grab on the frame and doop, put a dot on her and put her back. There's Tom. Hey, Tom, that link's right up there. Somewhere up here. Let me see. It's almost nine. He usually logs off at nine o'clock or ish. Come on. At times messing me up right now. I ain't had a day off this weekend, so I almost forgot what day it even was this evening. Yeah, and by the time I got up and took a shower and looked at the phone, you're like, do you want me to schedule it? I was like, sure. It was like 10 minutes till, right? <laughs> 10 minutes at a time. And then Bob oh, sends me a picture. Uh, his computer was updating. <laughs> computer updating, and he just LOL'd me. So, oh, I guess I could give the, uh, if I could find it real quick. Hold on. Uh, oh, not on that screen. 
Yeah, I think it was actually a couple minutes after seven. And I get this from Bob. That's it. The computer is uh, updating. Let me see if I can uh, give the updated championship uh, info here. Oops, wrong one. Uh, StreamYard, there we go. All right, so as it sits right now, this is what I have. I've got Keith Laramore with five swarms caught. I've got Todd with four, Stuffy with four, Chris the Bugman, two, Robert Souther Jr., two, Tom has turned in one, Tracy has turned in one, and Steve Amos has turned in two. So if you didn't hear your name on that list and you have submitted something with the bottle of Swarm Lure and your Swarm Catch, make sure to either email it to me or text it to me or something so we can uh, get you on the board. Try and click one comment, they fly by and hit the wrong one. Yeah, one of his videos, DC, was a, um, it was two catches in one video. It had two swarm boxes on it. So make sure we got that information. So right now, Keith is winning. Of course, it's a long time till we're done yet because we'll start seeing people in Tennessee and uh, West Virginia and all these other catches coming in. So uh, if you're down here in the south, you better get on it. Or, or when, uh, when it gets up to, like, Michigan, a swarm season hits Michigan, and you got people like Phil that call, like, 12 last year. So... Hey, Spanky, good to see you. And uh, so we got we got time. We just gotta gotta capture what we can. And see what we got. Randy says he's got Kona Queens coming from Hawaii on Thursday. I've got twenty five coming from California. Whenever I get that information from Jose, I might have to drop him a line to see when they're going to be ready. Um, so I can make sure I have my splits ready for them when they get here. I hadn't heard of any around my area yet. Not to say it ain't. That was just, I hadn't heard any. Now we had them few beads flying at work, but now I got moved. I'm in the unit right now, so I'm not seeing anything there. Let's see. You haven't seen any uh, swarms in your area? Nope. Even walking in my backyard, whenever I seen all them bees on the hive, I was worried maybe something back there is swarm. And just mm -hmm. looking around in the trees where I normally see something, nothing. I had a call for a cutout today from an apartment complex, and when they told me it was on the in the balcony on the second floor, I said, "No, thank you." Call this person; they might can get it for you. I'm not trying to get up on the on the ladder again to do that. Russell said he caught seven so far. Russell Eamon. I caught another swarm with a shotgun. Does that count as one? Here comes Philip. I, I guess if he got the shotgun and he tapes the uh swarm lure to the end of it. <laughs> Look like uh, Philip's video ain't coming in. He may still be having problems with the clips out there. He's still getting solar flares and blocking over there. I I hate that when people call me. Well, the other yeah. Phil's video is working. Where's the other Philip? <laughs> we're we're just swarming with Phil's. We're gonna fill squared when when uh, RTX Honeybees gets his stuff connected there. <laughs> what? Thank you, Tom. Appreciate you. So, what's going on, Phil? I thought you worked today. Uh yeah, kind of, sorta. 
It's called having a little visit to the HR department. So a little oh. bit of time stuff. <laughs> and they're done that. <laughs> you didn't tell the boss off, did you? Uh, no comment. <laughs> hey, you pulling to me like I did last week. <laughs> <laughs> Just put it this way, my boss ain't even been by my crane and I don't know since last Wednesday. All right. Now I'm seeing Philip in the back room. He's got a full picture, and then on the screen I'm seeing a black screen. He may be having signal issues. <laughs> Wait till he shows up in the screen there. No, this was actually last week. <laughs> you got a you got a did you get a paid vacation? No, unpaid. Unpaid? Unpaid. 13 days. <laughs> wow. You're like, great. I needed that time off for my bees anyway. Right. <laughs> That's what I told him. I'm like, couldn't it, can we just like delay this by like two or three weeks? Then that way it'll be like right when I need to be off. <laughs> Robert said he's caught 11 so far, but they were all in the trees. Yeah, that's kind of mine too. I call them swarm collections. Let's see if video works this time. Hey, All guys. right. Hey, I don't know. I was. I think my phone was trying to get in through Wi-Fi, and I'm out in my shed, so it was stuck between Wi-Fi and data, and it couldn't resolve itself. So now I'm just data. I turned the Wi-Fi off. Sorry about that. What you doing? Building? I see your breather there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm building uh, the end, end bars for my frames. I'm down to just having to slice the, I got them made like this, and I have to slice them on the table saw. That's all I have left to do. So you just use a two by four or something? Yeah, it's a two by four, and I plane it down to one and three eighths, then I notch it top and bottom, and I drill the holes in the sides using a jig, and then I run it across my, uh, joiner for these tapers and i splice it into three eighths inch pieces done is he Sean that's a lot of work man <laughs> you guys are i'm glad you like woodwork because a, I, would a, or, I would order a, that stuff so fast mm -hmm. <laughs> by the way he's there. doing it though is better than trying to cut one at a time and then shape it out yeah I got all those to slice up on the table saw. So I'm doing about 250 frames worth. Mm. Like 500 pieces. How much How much in two by fours do you have invested? Uh, hardly any because some of okay. them I. Let me rephrase my question before you answer it. If you had to buy the two by fours. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, probably, I'd say there's probably six or eight. Eight foot two by fours there. So I don't know. I mean, uh, the two by fours that I bought, I bought them out of the 70% off rack at Home Depot. You know, you go in the back and they've got the ones that have the paint on them. Right. So I get them real cheap. But some of them were just, they had nail holes and, you know, people, people give them away, put them out on the curb, stuff like that. That's, so it's, um... the, the wood is nearly free. I mean, the big expense is table uh, is power tools, but I already have those. So. Yeah, that's the. I mean, I've got a table saw, and I've got a bunch of hand saws and stuff like that, as far as power, you know. But man, no, it's like, it's not worth it. I'm not I'm not trying to tell anybody it's worth it. It's I just enjoy doing it, so that's really it. it to me, it's just fun to, to cut wood. Yeah, I mean, I've. I would probably find enjoyment of that if I didn't really have to do it, right? It's kind of like working on a car. I like changing yeah. the car when I don't have, to, you know, when it's like nothing's wrong with it and I can just do it when I want to. You do have a good point because I sh should have had this done two months ago. Because now I'm stuck having to decide between doing this and taking care of bees. And I have to do this because if I don't do this now, the bees are going to be ahead of me. And well, you don't have over. to. Amazon is I, only one click away. I, so. You're right. I could do that. <laughs> Bees you're are right about in the that. trees. I think uh, I was complaining about not having enough boxes. And I think Russell, it was Russell Amon or Koopman. And one of the Russells said, 
you could just order some boxes. <laughs> right. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> could just order them. It, but, you know, yeah. I get it. I mean, most people don't want to sit out there and spend all day filling buckets of syrup. And I did that all day today, right? So, right. Right. It's, uh, but, I, I mean, for the boxes, you you really can save money, and especially because I, I was given a bunch of plywood that I'm using. So I am saving a lot of money on boxes. But, right. And I, I am saving money on these, but I, you know I could go do my regular job and make way more money than doing this for sure. But I don't like my regular job as much as I like doing this sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I get it, man. I understand. I the, uh, get the table saw someday. <laughs> I've got one. Yeah, I got one buried somewhere. I just figured out how many days that do I? What did it say? You popped it down. I did figure. I don't know, I did figure how many days do yeah. I have to work to buy them, or how long will it take to make them? I probably could work hard one day and, and pay for these, but I, you know, I can say it. It's not, it's, not an, it's not an economic decision. That's what I keep telling people. It's not an economic decision. It's fun for me, and there's a sense of pride when you do it. You know, you have all these things you make. I mean, it's, I get it. But and there and trust me, some people say the quality's better. It's not. I'm not as good as the robots or whatever that make the. the <laughs> they, they don't fit together as good or anything as the one you. You're buy. trying to say you're not as good as a Chinese four year old. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Missing half his fingers. <laughs> that Chinese four year old. I know I only do this for a couple hours a day. That four-year-old works twelve hours a day on it. <laughs> Tom said he decided he's going to retire at the end of the year. Not sure if he can hold out that long. Yeah, it's. Wow. Okay. Tell you what, the from a couple of years ago when everybody was looking for people and they weren't trying to get rid of nobody, they didn't even the crappiest employee they were trying to keep around, right? Because they just didn't have bodies to. Uh, do anything and man fast forward to now it's like now they nitpick you and just drive you crazy and i'm still in that mentality that it's like you're just renting my times buddy that's all you're doing is paying me for time it's all funny games till somebody loses a <laughs> finger <laughs> then we turn I've come, it I've, come, I've come close to losing the thumb but I'm Wait, not, then, I'm we, not, then I'm we bring not, on the other phil <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh but you you're making 250 of them yeah i'm making uh enough for 20 boxes or so maybe a few more of the deeps and about 20 boxes of mediums and then i'm making uh let's see i'm making enough to... for about three or four boxes of these these texas deeps these combo Super deep brain. So, so whatever are, you, is, are you making as many as you think you're going to need, or are you making more? I'm making now. I'm making a few more, but not a lot more. Okay. I about I have, all, every time a beekeeper thinks they're going to have enough of what they order or building, they always need more. Well, I'm I'm for sure not making enough of the mediums if for the long term because you know. In my mind, to have a complete colony, you're going to need at least one deep and two medium boxes at a minimum, preferably three medium boxes. So I'm really only making enough for one deep and one medium for 20 for 20 high. So. But but yeah, I, I I'm only making enough for 10. I guess 200. I'm making enough for 100 frames of deeps and 100 frames of mediums, and then for uh, 30 frames of uh, 30 or 40 frames of the Texas deeps. So that all comes out to about 250 frames. That's only half of what I feel like I'm. Well, so it's all of the deeps, but it, it's only the half of the uh, mediums, honey supers that I'll need. But I don't think I'll need them this year. I'll just have to stay busy until next year. Well, hopefully with us not supposed to be getting that late freeze this year, maybe we'll have a good year for honey and you will be able to fill them all up. 
Yeah, I was pretty excited until I went down to the farm and I have lots of bees, but they don't have any food on them. Now, I didn't get them fed up like I should have in the fall, but literally I went into some of them and there was just a smattering of nectar that they had collected. They were using every drop of nectar they were bringing in to, to raise young. Mm -hmm. So we're getting a couple of days of rain down there. Uh, I texted the neighbor. And this morning, he said they had gotten 3.8 inches of rain. It was still raining. Hmm. But we needed, rain... yeah. Go ahead. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, we needed, uh, he said we didn't need the rain, but I thought, I saw cracks in the ground when I was down there last weekend. So I think there, there's a lot of flowers, but I don't think they're carrying much nectar right now. So we needed <laughs> this rain. I'm trying to pull mine up here. It's showing it's supposed to start around midnight tonight and go all the way until about six or seven o'clock tomorrow evening. It was it was bad enough we got the text at the end of today at work. They already canceled work for tomorrow and a bunch of the schools here are shut down tomorrow too. We're like a day behind you because the weather you got today, I'm getting tomorrow, right? Like 80 degrees. Mm-hmm. Uh, usually about a day to day and a half. That's what we had. That's what we had uh, yesterday or last last night. It rained a lot here at my house, which is north of where the farm is. But it continued to rain down there. But we didn't get much rain today. And we only have about 50 percent chance all the way through tomorrow. Hmm. But we got we got last night. We got inch and a half, two inches. It, was, it rained hard for an hour or two. Really hard. Yeah, let's see. But I thought I was going to go down there and see a bunch of swarm south, but I hadn't been down there in like three and a half weeks. But, but I could have missed another week or two, I think. I only found, only saw three queen cells in one hive out of about 20 that deck, which was a shock, shocking to me. Heck, I found some swarm cells up here a couple days ago. And and no no I didn't catch any swarms in my yeah. ten swarm traps. So, but I hadn't been using the swarm rustler, so I'm like the control group. So you guys use the swarm rustler because I'm getting shut out with <laughs> lemongrass. <laughs> you got a shutout going on? I got a well no I did get one I got one at my mother in law's house. I got one. But I've got 13 traps up. Those I caught at her house are great bees, though. I'm moving them, they didn't, they're really gentle. I mean, they're not huge yet, but they're, I didn't have to use smoke on them. And that's really unusual for me. As far as gentleness, usually my bees are pretty decent. I can go out there without gloves and everything. Sometimes I go with just a veil, maybe not. But usually the first time that I go in on for the spring, I don't know if it's just because they hadn't been messed with all winter or what. They usually mean as heck. But this year, they, they were fairly calm. But even when I, had, I went in on two weekends ago, it was just habit. I threw my gloves on and really didn't even need them. Well, I have. I tried to do two demo rays. I think I accidentally killed the queen in one. So I just broke it back down and let them make another queen. And then I uh, had another one that I, that I was working and it had all the queen cells. I took, I knocked those down. I moved all the uh, brood from the top down to the bottom and brought the open brood back to the top. And then I got to thinking yesterday, I'm like, Oh shoot, it's been like 10 days since I've been, checking that i thought okay i probably got virgins running around in there so i went in this morning to check them and i'll be darned if there wasn't even a, a semblance of a queen cell that they drew out the second time you know there was a second round through them but i figured since they had brood it was still far away but there wasn't very many bees in the top they hadn't stored any honey to speak of and the two honey supers but man they're packed out in the bottom box but no queen cells i checked there's no queen cells in the bottom but the queens down there laying they're packed out but they're kind of refusing to cross that queen is clear 
I don't know if it's going to work for me or not. Now, above the queen excluder, is it drawn out or is it just foundation? It's it's uh, six. There are six drawn columns and four uh, foundation or foundationless in the two boxes. Okay. And they're kind of checkerboard. That's the way I'm. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I noticed a couple of years ago, if I tried to throw like a new box on with just waxed foundation, they wouldn't go through the excluder fart. Right. But if I pulled that excluder out and gave them a couple hours and they kind of went up to it, I could throw that excluder in and make sure the queen was below it. And once they were up yeah. there, then they would start messing with it. Well, you know, it's not really fair. There were bees in those supers, but they were only on the drone comb. And I think they might be cleaning it up, getting it ready for something. But they were no bees up there trying to draw comb at all. And there were bees in the bottom because I could put a, I could put an empty frame in that bottom and they'll draw it out in a week. Put throw it in the brood nest and yeah they. So I may have to, I don't want to have to pull any more back to the top. So I want to. I want to leave them alone because they're plenty strong to make honey, but they just they're not they're they're not enough of them in the top three boxes. And if I don't see a change, I don't see any reason to leave that top box on there once it's cleaned up and there's nothing in it. There was one frame that's full of honey up there that I moved up there myself, but, and it's, you know, and I'm not even going to harvest that. It's like the honey from last year. I'll just use it in a split or something, but I don't see any reason to leave that top box on. Do you guys, if once, you know, if you're not moving, uh, I guess, are you supposed to keep bringing the brood up? I guess you are throughout the year, but. I was about to say, I mean, good. like uh, Ed says there, if you pull a frame of brood up, usually they'll go ahead and come up there too. Now, they got another question on the screen for you. So oh, yeah. yeah. West Cliff, those uh, Texas deep, that's a medium and a deep combo? Yeah. How, yeah. How like that, that, yeah, that's exactly what it is. Um, I like them. I've got like seven of those colonies, and I'm trying to get four more started. Uh I, yeah, I do like them. I've got one colony out at the farm that's amazingly strong. They've grown 10 frames of those deeps, and they are packed out. i got two honey supers on them, hoping they'll fill those up. But How do you extract I, them? Well, you don't. You, you, that's your brood nest. Is the, it, it's, like a, it's like a deep and a half brood nest, but it's all combined into one frame. I got you. So, then you just yeah, still you, put regular size supers on it. Right. But now, the the challenging thing for me, if I don't have some more boxes ready to go, if I go into one of those and find queen cells, it's going to be hard to make splits out of, you know, I'll have to. But I like the fact that you can just take the you, once you go through 10 frames, you're, you're finished and you're not you're not committed to a, a single deep. Now, I am switching to a lot of mine to single deep. I've, I've shaken everything down, putting queen scissors over. But uh, the, do you have the, upper uh, entrance? I, I do not. Well, I can't. Sometimes I do. When, I, when we get into the flow, I have a notch in my inner cover, but for the most part, I keep the I keep the lid pulled back to close it off, especially in the winter time. But now, in the, I was trying to use this little oh Bob, what were they called? We were talking about before the red entrances. Oh, the guardian hive entrances. I think little, it may have been the guardian upper entrance, the round ones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I tried a couple of them and I noticed like some guard bees would set at it and not really let anything in. But as far as bees flying in and out of it, they never wanted any upper entrance here. So I just ended up closing those off. But that question made me realize that that, that Damari split that I'm having, I guess, problems with, it does not have an upper entrance. There's no notch in the inner cover at the top. So there's no way for them to get up there except to go through the bottom. And I, I wish it did have one because when I took it apart today, there were a couple of hundred drones trying to get through, some dead, some alive, trying to get through that clean excluder. But uh, one, if, if you do try that extra deep frame, it is absolutely critical that your colony is dead solid level this direction because if it's like that you're going to get some weird comb it's going and in mine in mine I, I just use a starter strip i don't use i don't use the plastic so I mean, you don't need to run work. wire any kind of fishing line I or did, anything from? you know i took every one of those frames i had put together to the farm this last weekend i don't have one to show you but i well here let me just show you a regular frame that i have Yeah, 
this is what I, this is my normal deal. It's fishing line and a little starter strip at the top, a wax starter strip. And I do that even with the Texas deep. It just gets deeper and there's like six of these in the middle instead of two. This is medium. But that's, that's my typical frame. And I don't have much problem with uh, wonky comb, but the, the swarm I caught at my mother-in-law's house, they went diagonally across this stuff. And I had to cut them apart and basically treat it like a cutout. But like I said, I, I, I've got 30 colonies and I bet I've had trouble with wonky comb in four or five at the most. Because this is what people say will happen right here. <laughs> There's an example of what they can do from time to time. I pulled that out of a colony at the farm this weekend. You just but cut it out and give it back to them. Yeah, I just cut it out and then melt it down. But it's that's rare, I'm telling you. It, because it, I, I think if I didn't have that wax starter strip, it would be worse. I got that from Joe May, the skinny bee man does that. That's where I stole that idea. I got that from Sam, who got it from Joe May. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got several like that. And they, I think they prefer that compared they to the population because they, they can work both sides at the same time. They absolutely prefer it. Because I've got some plastic foundation that when I bought my first colonies, I bought some some empties that I've used, but uh, and they prefer it over a full a full wax sheet too. They, my bees don't take that well to those, but uh, but you put some a starter strip in there and they'll festoon down and work both sides out at the same time. Yeah, yeah, and the other thing you can do with the starter strip is you don't have to worry so much about splitting the brood nest because you're not really splitting it. You're putting some space there, but the bees can still bridge across and keep the brood warm. They're not going to, it's not like putting a plastic sheet in the middle of your brood nest. So they react to it a lot better when you I, split I thought, the brood nest with, with it. I thought I had a ghost. The door just swung open. My cat just pushed the door open and came in here and meowed. Uh -huh. so if, I don't, if I don't pick her up, she's going to start meowing really loud. So. I, think, I, I think cats have a special relationship with the undead anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I am definitely this cat's human. It adopted me. So it's okay. uh it's the only one in the house. All right. Well, I'm gonna mute my mic and start cutting some boards, but I'm gonna listen to you guys. All right. Hey, Brian. Yeah, it looked like Brian got stapled today. Ouch. They get they get that way in the spring around here too. And you think he would learn not to go out there with shorts on? <laughs> I I think it's hilarious that he's wearing shorts but got a full beast jacket on with veil. Now, Brian, did you get that on video? That's what we all want to see. <laughs> see how fast he runs. Heck, I got one on the inside of the ear today. Flew into my ear and stung me. Mm. Got it. Did you have a veil on? Did it get in your veil? No, I didn't have a veil on. <laughs> I've had that happen with when they got in the veil and then got in my ear and is like try to dig them out. I was just going through and cleaning up dead outs and. Had a rogue one. But I will edit it out. <laughs> All right. Look, hold on to me. You got to go now. Go away. I just, got got a, I just got a picture here from Mr. Larry, Hallelujah B Farm. He said this is his Demeray setup. All right, so brood down on the bottom. See a queen excluder in there. Queen down on the bottom, and then, then another brood box, and then another. I see a little entrance right there. It looks like the bees 
coming in or out. Is that top box just a feeder box? Is that a medium and a shallow, or is that two mediums? That almost looks like a medium and a shallow. Yeah, it looks like, yeah. It's far enough away either way. Uh, can you zoom in, like, above the shallow there? Is there a queen excluder right there? There should be if there's not. It looks like there's a little gap there, but I can't tell for sure in that picture. Mine looked like that from prying on them. Medium honey super on top. Should work. The only reason you put that second excluder in there is to keep any cells that might hatch before you can get back from going down, you know, going through the excluder into the bottom. Looks good. No, medium and shallow foundation in the middle. If, the only thing I, like I said, the only thing I'd recommend is if you don't have an excluder underneath that top brood box, I'd put one in there if you got one. She wanted to know if your eardrum was ticklish, she said. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Very sensitive, I can tell you that much. <laughs> you said they check on every seven days, so no extra excluder. Okay. Yeah, just make sure you catch them. Crush them down. The next time you go in, anything, everything should be old enough. That any cell should be... Uh, that's why I was saying here a while back, I sent out three or the four packages with some of uh, the queen mandibular pheromone. And if anybody was going to try to do a dim ray, maybe put a little piece of that pheromone in the top. See if that would keep them from drawing out any queen cells. Don't think they already have a queen up there. Right. He said he calls it a rolling dim ray. Yeah, it's kind of like what Charlie does. Just keep rolling the brood up to the top and keep them hatching out that one don't sound very fun getting stung right on the tip of the nose Ugh. whose picture was that i uh, seen the other day was that philip there rtx talking about he didn't zip his uh veil all the way up probably me yeah i, I see him shaking his head <laughs> 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 Didn't just hit the veil and got a bee in there with him. I've done it as well. God, I'm watching those little pieces jump on him. <laughs> He's just cutting them up. Yeah, I saw the one little piece go flying on him. <laughs> you have a box down there catching them. Just needs to hire him some four year old Chinese kids. <laughs> But they got to come from China. You got to import them. Ugh. Check them out. See where they're flying. Work is amazing. I could watch it all day long. Yeah, as long as I ain't got to do it. <laughs> That's it. That, that one that I saw went flying, went flying off to his left. He said he just didn't want to see a finger go flying. Ugh, yeah. Hey there, Alex. We're, John, where are you located? I saw Brian's going to come see you this weekend or see you this weekend. So here's a question. What would, uh, I mean, you know, our, our swarm season is not for another two or three weeks up here. Um, I had that one hive where I found a couple uh, swarm cells on it. What's your guys' opinion on why they'd be making it this early? I, Are you having a mild winter compared to normal? Yeah, severely mild. I mean, it wasn't that she she doesn't. She's got plenty of room. I mean, there's a whole nother uh, deep box that it was completely empty. How old is the queen that's in there? Uh, she'd be a 22. 22. So second year. Yeah. 
but you know the funny thing with that is though i saw that video the cells were on the bottom of the frame like a swarm cell right yeah so it was uh and, and um, they, there, yeah there was something there was something in them so it wasn't like they were just practice cells or anything and they're not up them down yeah yeah there's three of them so going, you said they got a, a second box but they're not really using it yeah i took i took the uh the box that had the brood and everything i put i, I rotated them so she's got the uh, empty boxes on the top now thought maybe that might help that might do it or <clears throat> uh, you pull a frame of brood up drop a frame down right and and let them uh come up there yeah you might even take the one with the queen on it and put her in the top box and leave leave them in the bottom she'll probably go back down there but yeah um, at least they'll know they've got the space yeah i'm gonna wait a couple more days and go back in that one because i couldn't find her i mean there, i found eggs so i know she's in there so i'm gonna right. go back in there and see what she does but just the amount of the, the amount of drones that were emerging too so i'm, I'm just thinking natural reproduction right where they just yeah, want to yeah i think she's just, just super early there's alex hey there alex how are you doing tonight hey alex good evening watching yeah. something yeah, he's cut, he's making frames. Two hundred and fifty of them. Yeah, I mean, I really thought of making those. Um, I decided against it. <laughs> he's two hundred and fifty more times uh, dedicated than I am. Denny Ray's bees was asking recommendations on just a veil. As far as the one that I use, if I'm going out there with just a veil, no suit or anything, I like the clear view from a uh, man lake. You can get it with the string that can tie around you, or are they supposed to have one with some type of zipper on it? I got the one with the elastic armbands that go around, and I've got the one with the little, like, half shirt from Saracel. I bought the one with the string, but I took the string out and just let it sit down around my shoulders, and it seems to do just fine. Yeah, that is that the uh, one that's got, like, the string's a little bit elastic, or is it just regular string? I think it was regular string on that one. Okay. I can't remember where I got one from, but it was it had the elastic strings. You put your arms through, and, yeah, that lasted about a month until they are all stretched out. That that veil there, I believe I've had two, two or two and a half years, and I've actually washed it in the washing machine, and it still seems to be good. In fact, it's sitting on the dryer right now because I just washed it last week. Hold on. <laughs> and Lee, Lee's got to get up, take a break. <laughs> yeah, I, I tried washing my my old bee jackets, and it tore the veils because it was really cheap mesh. So I I bought the uh, like typical uh, like window mesh for sc uh, like a screen uh, screen, yes, and. Um, it took me two years just to like bother replacing it, but it did, it did a good job. It's vented around the top, so it lets that excess heat out mm. too. But sting it's, holes. It's comfortable. Sting, yeah, sting holes, especially when you're <laughs> bald. Nah, actually, I find my head don't go all the way up to the vent. I mean, it, it still sits down here, and you can actually adjust that too. You could tighten the top up, uh, but it just lets that heat out. Well, that's good. Usually when I get a hat like that, mine goes down in it pretty well. And it gets, well, you know, my bees will find a hole to sting me at if they can. For <laughs> sure. The is. Yeah, I want to check if I did this bees this weekend. And I lost a few more, even though I gave them sugar. I think three more. So I'm down to 20. Well, it went, that auction escalated quickly. Really? Once mine, yeah, once mine got beat, all of a sudden it went up and now 
I had a bid of 15500 on it, and it got beat. And it, they wanted me to bid 16000 So I've, I've been just kind of tracking to see where it's at. Right now, it's at 59000 So yeah, I would have lost anyway, but that's where it sits right now. Bids 59 So they do. They love me, especially when I'm not in their box. They love it even more. Have a good night there, Ben. Thank you for coming. Yep, thanks for coming, Ben. The, uh, But there's not, I mean, we're just getting in that, that spot right now where it's just before flow, right? So check this, the strength of the colonies and add boxes as needed. Yeah, I'm probably have to do some equalizing because some of them were small but, like, healthy. Right. So I'll probably take from my, my strongest hives a frame of, of brood, maybe two, and force them. We'll see how, how strong is the strongest. How many, how many are you sitting at now? 20 out of 30. Like technically 21, but I don't expect the last one to survive. James looks tired. Oh, James is in the middle of a shutdown and he's beekeeping. So, mm -hmm. and uh, being as, uh, you know, Phillip's in the shop. Well, it, the weather's not the nicest outside. So I'm in the shop making mini mating nukes. So. Styrofoam ones or? No. So. James James McNally's thief bait. <laughs> uh, so four this is a four packer. Well, it is, but they're all individual, so they're all individual boxes. And the way I made these is, uh, I was talking to Brad. There's another beekeeper over in Manitoba. These are the the outside dimensions is the exact same size of a box. So this will sit right on top of the hive once I put the, the, the mini foundations and stuff in. So the bees will come up and work and draw this. I can take these, set them out individually, or um, I want everything to match. So these will sit on my pallets. I could just put an additional uh, few plates on the bottom of the pallet, and each pallet will give me um, eight uh, mini mating nukes, which will stack in the bee barn. So um that's what we're up to tonight i've got uh what 80 90 i got 92 cut out so i got another 58 to go did you get uh all your boxes wax dipped um not quite all of them so i've got uh everything that i cleaned so all my biosecurity is all done it's recleaned it's actually sitting back out in the uh, the bee yard about to get refilled and uh I've probably got, I don't know, 40, uh, 40 boxes left to dip. Plus, I'm going to have to dip all of these, right? So that, uh, that dipping tank has paid me dividends probably five times over already. Like that is, uh, um, it was a good investment. Yeah, mine small can only do one at a time, but I, I really love this. I like the work. I don't like painting boxes. <laughs> well so, if you don't yeah. like painting boxes you're really not going to like painting boxes every four or five years because um depending on what paint you use that's pretty much what you know what i found i had to do up here with the weather anyways how often do you have to redip boxes um i don't know i've got some that are three years old i and are, are good i only redip these nuke boxes because that's my battery i don't know if you guys follow um this guy called Ian Stepler. Yeah. <laughs> Who? <laughs> Never heard of the guy. Where's, yeah. he, where's he from? Western Canada. Yeah. So, so two years ago, he put uh, actually down at the the first Hive Life conference, he put on a uh, um, a display there. Where do I get the wax? Wix and wax out of Vancouver is where I get my wax. Um, but he put on uh, his speech down there was about his battery, and uh, I listened closely, and I'm glad I did because. My battery is basically my own insurance policy, if you will. So it, uh, I drained my battery 100%, but it filled in every one of my 
hives that I lost for the winter and it filled in a couple holes that I had going into winter. So um, those, and like I said, if you watch the video, there's six frames of, uh, of solid bees, four of which are cab brood. So put them into a 10 frame box. They've got that box filled already. So very good insurance policy. Yeah, I but, plan on using that starting this year. Last year, like I was at my limit, <coughs> and uh, I didn't have any, enough uh, gear. But now that I have, I purchased more boxes. I should be able to um, raise extra nukes. The problem is managing them so they don't overgrow the nukes over over the summer. So, either put or uh, try and fit. Because they're not six frames, they're five frame boxes. You can find a way of fitting them um, by plugging the excess with tape, I don't know, and putting supers so they have room to store the honey, or just keep robbing them so they stay small enough to stay in five frame boxes. Yeah. Well, like I said, I'm making these meeting mating nukes because everybody knows the problem I have have where I'm located to try and get queens. So um, I've decided to take matters into my own hands and uh, I'm hoping to have 160 queens at any given time at my disposal. So. That's always good to be able to pull pull excess queens and, and use them as you need them. Graft, that's my next, uh, my next one. When, when are you gonna start your first grafts? Uh, could be as early as, uh, uh, this weekend. So I do have drones out there already. Um, of course I had two colonies of drones, but that's just not enough to saturate what I, what I would require. But, um, um, I'm actually dealing with swarm cells already, which is something that I've never had to deal with this early in the year. So, um, those colonies are, are producing drones. I have drones that are hatching out. Um, yeah, it's just, I uh, I took a look there this afternoon or just after work on my way home, I popped the lid on a couple and I crushed a couple of swarm cells. So I got to get in and get going through all of them. I just, uh, um, I've, I've never had to deal with, with swarm cells this early in the year. Well, that's a, a good bad news or a bad good news. Well, I'm going into, we're just starting a two week uh, shutdown at the mill. So those are 12 to 14 hour days. So if you think I look tired now, check in uh, again in a week and a half for two weeks time. <laughs> so, but no, it's, it's all good. It's just, uh, um, it's like, it's, it's bees. So, you know, you think you know what they're going to do and they will surprise you every time. So it's, Back to the basics, back to the life cycle of a bee, back to understanding what they're doing and why, and then a, a deal with it and address it, right? So, but yeah, that's what I'm up to. So trying to get 160 mini mating nukes uh, all done up. So how's your weather doing up there? Are, are you getting warm a little bit earlier than normal, or is it kind of well, running regular schedule? Yeah. We never really had a winter, believe it or not. I think we had one, maybe two weeks of, of cold weather, and that that was it. So um, they're seeding in the fields up here. So, you know, there's farmers out there. I would have thought the ground was too cold, but um, Alan was out working in the, his yard the other day, and it's not frozen. He can drive, you know, pegs and stuff like that, six, eight to eight inches in the ground type thing and, and, and nothing. So, um, yeah, it's, it's dry. We've, we've already had 14 fires in the uh, the county of Grand Prairie already. So that's not a good way to start off. This time of year, we should be saturated and soaked, and uh, we're battling fires already. Hmm. Well, I knew you said you were getting ready to start grafting already, and I just figured on an average year, that's a little bit earlier than normal. So I figured you had warmer weather. About, six, about yeah, four to six weeks early. So... <clears throat> you know, it's, um, it's, it's really early. So, um, of course you gotta wait till you get the drones. Um, yeah, exactly. Jim, um, you gotta wait till you have the drones out there and 
drones are hatching out. I've got I've got drones in in the colonies. So, um, you know, if I started grafting this weekend, that gives another even if I said 16 days, 18 days ish, you know, um, for the rest of the drones to hatch out, I should be sitting in pretty good shape. So at the absolute latest, it'll be uh, right after shutdown. So at the absolute latest, it'll be, you know, in two weeks time. So basically the end of the month. So, so when you say shutdown, the plant shuts down, but because you're over the maintenance and facilities there, you guys go to work when they're all off. Absolutely. Yeah. It's our PM and all preventive maintenance and all that on the equipment. Basically yep. they shut everything down and then you go in while it's shut down to redo everything, rework it basically, it, it, rebuild some stuff, change filter stuff. So you do yep. a lot of work while the plant's shut down and they want to hurry up and get that done so they can back get back up and running. Absolutely. So you work in a lot of hours. Well, and this is a short, what we call, what we consider a short shot. So this uh, year, I think it's what, 14 days. Um, next year, I think is what we would consider a long shot. So it could be 18 to say 21 days. And then uh, in 2026, um, we got some boiler work and stuff we got to do. So I do believe we're looking at a 30 or a 32 day outage. So um, that's a big one. I've had a few of them. Exxon, they got one unit out there, uh, DB3, you call it main train. Whenever it shuts down, it's usually about 45 days of either 712s or 716s. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, but they only do well, that that unit about ele every 11 years, they redo that one. Yeah, well, we, uh, um, so we start shutting down this week again. The, the crews come in basically Monday, Tuesday. And it's 24 hours a day, round the clock, um, you know, two crews. Um, right now we're, we're set for 12 hour days. So 12 and 12, 12 days on days, 12 on nights and uh, right straight, straight through. So 14 days. Mm. Good money. Well, if you get paid by the hour. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you on salary then, huh? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but, uh, no, it, 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 it's all good. So, um, like I say, it just, it, it is, it is. Philip is to make look like he's a busy beekeeper. Yeah. Well, I, I feel because uh, he's making what, sidebars? Yeah. <laughs> look like he's in a bind right now, not making anything. Yeah. yeah. I got I to be stuck in here. I got to get out. So uh, I'm, I'm going to have that to do as soon as I'm done. I made a, a things a little bit different, though. I've got a bit of a sled and stuff made, so I don't have to uh, muck around with what, with what he's doing there. Send me an extra one. Get What's everybody one else? Else? Syrup. Draining syrup and doing lawn work. That's what I've been doing for the last oh. couple of days. There you go. Well, I've got to get my lawn work done too. Is get it all raked and get all the uh, the pine cones off the front yard and get it all fertilized. And I, I need to find out where you order the day stretcher from. I need one of those. Something yeah. else that can stretch those days out. Like, <laughs> yeah. as far as I know, there's only 24 hours in a day, James, and you got to sleep some of those. I about to say I don't want my days no longer than they are now. I, I think I, I think I've been nine days straight working. Yeah, I got a very understanding wife. Let's put it that way. So, uh, um, prime Which example, is a unicorn. I, yeah, I was up at uh, what shortly after five this morning, and uh, um, yeah, by the time I'm done out here, it'll probably be you know nine thirty, ten o'clock. I would think by the time I get at least things ripped, um, you know, ready to start. Uh, you know, mitering and datoing and everything like that. So it'll be a long day, but uh, what else am I going to do? I, I, I guess I could go on YouTube and, and not do much or something, but. <laughs> Shots fired? No, no, I'm on here. I'm on here lots. It's, uh, you know, it all is good. Just move north. Soon the sun won't. Yeah, exactly. It won't ever set. And then. Uh, you know, there's a little bit of a story with that. So when I first graduated from high school, 
I went up to Yellowknife. I uh, went up there to work in a uh, sheet metal fabrication and installation shop up there. And uh, I moved up, you know, my, I think it was right somewhere around about July. So I get up there and I moved into my, uh, my place and everything up there. You know, um, I was beat. So it's a 12 hour drive from here to, to Yellowknife. And uh, anyways, I crawl into bed and I roll over and I hear a lawnmower going. Of course, I was supposed to report to work this, uh, this next day. And, um, I hear a lawnmower going, I look over and here it says it's, it's 4.15 and I'm thinking, holy crap, like I'm gonna get fired on day one. So down to the shop I go, I'm in the back and I'm grabbing their work orders and I'm building all these sheet metal fittings and, and everything else. And I've got this big pile done and <laughs> eight o'clock comes by and the guys come walking in the back door and they're looking at this pile of sheet metal fittings and they're like, uh, what you doing? And I'm like, wow, sorry, guys, I slept in. I didn't mean to let you down. And uh, why is everybody here at 8 o'clock at night? And they all started laughing. Mm. Next door neighbor was <laughs> mowing his lawn in a, you know, just short sun tanning, drinking a beer at 4.15 a.m. So I was down at the shop at, you know, 5 a.m. type thing. And these guys all came in at 8 o'clock. I damn near had the day done. They laughed. My bath and laughed. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. The sun I, does set up there, and you have no idea. Did you get to leave early? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I didn't. I haven't made it that bad, but I have woke up on days early like that that I wasn't supposed to work, say a weekend, just not realizing what day it was. I woke up and got dressed for work and went to go get in the vehicle and then realized. But I ain't never made it all the way to work. <laughs> I made it to work, and I, I honestly thought I was going to get fired here, yo. You know, day one or day two or whatever the heck it was, I thought, great. You know, I'm done just like that. You know, you move, you know, up to another province and 12 hour drive away and, and lose your job on day one. As it turned out, they never, ever did let me forget that. So <laughs> I used to do that too. People used to, when I worked for the bread company, they would say, why do you get here so early? Because I could get all of my daily inventory truck loaded separated everything and in the truck before everybody came in and then Hold on, i just stood around stop. talking to them drinking a coffee making them late right because <laughs> i was already <laughs> done i can leave at any time so uh, yeah and funny. then they were all out still working while i was done because i got there earlier than everybody else yep well i think i'm going to go back to cutting I'll uh, keep listening to you guys in the background here. I just wanted to pop in and say hi. And, you know, um, oh, we got about 10 minutes watching, left. I was going to say watching Phil is making me feel guilty. And I'm thinking maybe I better get back to But my <laughs> Oh, I don't feel guilty at all. I'll watch him do all 250 you know, of them with a cold beer in the air conditioning. And some popcorn. <laughs> some popcorn. No problem. Some Death Wish coffee. That's it. No <laughs> problem. There you, there you go. But uh, anyways, guys, have a great evening. Good to see everybody again. I'd like I said, I just thought I'd pop in and say hi. Have All right. Thanks, James. Nice have a good one, James. James. Philip, steady at it. See what he got left on that last one. Mm -hmm. Right down in there. That's the piece of wood that shoots back and hits you in the chest. Turn yeah, the blade it off. <laughs> Hurts like Turn the blade off, then get it out. He's going to fall over on that thing in a minute. Does he have a router table, too? I'd be curious how he uh, notches that top notch. I've got a router, just not a table for it. I'd be more likely to spend the money and buy the Chinese tool that allows you to just like 700 bucks and do all the sides. That's what oh, I was oh. thinking, Jim, Jim. Dado blade. Dado. I have one of those, a Dado stack. It can get from normal blade to about uh, an inch wide. Depending, yeah, depending on which size you buy, you can get different ones. 
use a joiner to make the slide. Okay. It's a lot of work, though, man. Too much for me. Or we can just uh, post Philip's phone number and uh, put our orders in. Put our <laughs> orders in for <laughs> Philip frames. I, I just click on better be. You know, I was going to make a point, but if I was making frames, I wouldn't be able to do a live stream. And But, you know, Philip proved that wrong. You can do a live stream and make frames at the same time. Yeah, what David Ryle said, a zero clearance uh, insert or field plate <laughs> really helps. He's going to take the light bulb out. <laughs> Ching! That's crazy. And they still scare them. You'd have to pay me five dollars per frame if you bought it from me. Five dollars a frame. <laughs> <laughs> Does that include foundation, heavy wax, with no. delivery? Yeah, with oh. delivery. Per personal <laughs> delivery, not, not yeah. yellow. <laughs> The zero Better bees a lot easier. Yeah. For me, too. But hey, if that's what you want to do, do it. Do it. That's I mean, for if sure. If you can afford the time and you don't mind. The, uh, man. Well, yeah. it's official. The shot does make you feel like crap. So. You know, feel bad for a couple of days, huh? That's what I said. Well, maybe after you do it a few times, though, your body will get used to it. It won't be as bad next time. Or yeah, you take it once every time. two weeks. So shot for what? Uh, it's like the most dramatic cholesterol reducing medicine or whatever that they have on the market uh, mm -hmm. here. I don't remember the name of it. My wife's got yeah. the box and everything, but. It's an injectable one, so it's kind of like, uh, almost like an EpiPen, right? Where you put it on you, and it shoots like a bunch of medication into you. You got to hold it on you for like 20 seconds for it to all go in. So hopefully it makes a difference. We'll see, because I'm sure they'll want labs next time I go to the VA to get that done. But... Let's see. Let me mute this. I get tons of messages. <laughs> and, yeah, I might be looking for some honey here soon. I got plenty of honey. <laughs> we can't uh, afford that uh, one tree unicorn honey, though. Yeah, that <laughs> unicorn honey, that shit's amazing, but it's too expensive. It's like... <laughs> Like be crack. I would have to label that on the jar. You mean you thought about that all the way to Canada? I I thought about uh hey, I've got a big ass truck and no job. So there's nothing stopping me at the moment. Yeah, but um, just fuel costs is just... still haven't heard anything from that uh Canadian thing you applied for? No, I probably won't. No, nah, no. Nah. They probably look at it and be like, oh, wait, and he worked at Michigan State. He's got, paper. you know, it's. Yep, they just left it right there. <laughs> yeah, and I think they're more for, like, student age people, right? They don't want no old man in there. But, uh, but yeah, that's. Uh, 
crazy. Let's see. So it looks like up in Canada, my some swarm uh, swarm rustler bullets made it to their uh, drawing table up there. And so those fire with crystals uh, impregnated with a lure? Is that what you're talking about? Yes. Yes, sir. But, well, guys, I know it's a little bit early, but we're kind of at a, a lull in the... Uh, we're just all fascinated by Phil, like, sawing stuff. Phil sawing. <laughs> and I've got a call I've got to make after this, so kind of uh kind of crazy information coming down the pipe so yeah, what yeah. i will say is if you need appy tablets i'd probably order them now because we just don't know what's going to happen with the news that i got today so oh and uh we'll see um see how it goes but right now i don't know we'll probably know in the next little bit though I'll tell you what, cutting this listening to you guys' nonsense makes it go a lot faster. Really? <laughs> yeah. I'm insulted. Jeez. <laughs> well, how did Ian call it? He says sometimes he likes to go in the shop and listen to some, what do you call it, mindless banter? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, we got you covered there. That's a nice and, and you're nice looking at the put. video, and the sad part was it was, it was a live stream of, like, me, Brad, James – you know, sitting on the screen talking. And I was like, oh, okay, well, now we know how you feel, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, so good. any rate, guys, uh, we do appreciate y'all. Thank you for the super chats, Philip and uh, James Noel for the memberships. We appreciate that. Thank you so much. And, uh, you know, we'll be here again next week. God willing. All right. Y'all have a good one. Good night. Good night.